Cousins and kin folks, what up? Y'all remember us? My name is the Big Swagoo, and his name is Perk, and we yeah. back. It's been a lot going on, bro. Me and you been talking, but we ain't sat down for a podcast in a minute. It's been a lot going on, and we got to let our cousins and kin folks know, because you know you can't tell everybody in your family what's going on all the time, because they be judging you. All right, but Perk, <laughs> Perk it's what? good to see you, brother. It's good they to see what? you. I love you. They be judging you, man. Like yeah. they be like, y'all been gone. We don't even rock with y'all no more like that. <laughs> well, we we've had some things happen, and we yeah. will tell y'all in this podcast, Swaggoo and Perk, cousins and kin folks. We ain't right. We dysfunctional too. So just yeah. bow with us. But we're not so, perfect. Bro. We're not perfect. Swaggoo, look, I miss you. I miss you. I miss you. And, and, and I think we need to just clear the out, okay? Let's clear, clear the out. out. <laughs> Let's clear the out right now <laughs> on why we've been missing in action, okay? And okay. it's not your fault. It's all my fault, okay? So right. it's it's a lot of things that transpired. We talked about this on the last episode at the end, and I told you about my whole pet coach situation. Me falling, everything, right? I told you about that told you the encouraging, lovely, lovely words that my wife gave me when she pulled up on me, right? Your big ass right. had to fall outside the stove. Mm -hmm. Okay, we get that. But let me talk to you about the actual surgery, the recovery, and what the hell I've been doing, okay? All right, yeah. you, you need to understand this, okay? First, tell us what the injury was. What, what was well, the injury? So, so I ruptured my quad, okay? Mm -hmm. I ruptured my quad. And... When you're down, you know who your real friends are, right? Because real friends don't kick you when they when you down. But <laughs> you leave it up to Richard Jefferson, he'll do just that. All right. I posted my, you know, me in the surgery bed, you know what I'm saying, fresh out of the operate off the operating table. And you know what he posts? I'm, I'm glad you're trying to get down to your player weight. Like I went at <laughs> surgery on, <laughs> to remove some things, right? That's the first thing. Then he gives me a call yesterday and said, hey, how you feeling, my guy? And I'm like, you know what, man? I'm at the crib. I'm, I, you know, I can't go nowhere. You know, I, I'm making it happen, right? I'm, I am. He tells me, well, you know, if you wasn't 400 pounds, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> so I, said, I, said, I, said, I said, hey, Richard, man, you know what I'm saying? Not right now, man. Not, not right, right now, now bro. Nah, not right now. So I, I politely you play too much. Up. He played too much. So I politely hung up in his face because he called himself giving me some real information that I wasn't trying to hear at the time. So I've been at the crib. I've been on my couch. My knee is in a knee brace. I got to... I got to walk around the house with crutches. I can't go nowhere. I can't drive. I can't go outside really because I just got to stay put for the next two yeah. weeks. So okay. I'm, I'm pain free. Okay, I'm pain free. So I'm off the drugs. I'm off the medication. Good. That's good. There ain't That's no good. more sleeping and ain't no more doing that, falling asleep, doing conversations and things like that in the daytime. I'm done with that because you have to realize this, okay? I haven't had a drink in three years. Seriously. Yeah. I, I don't drink. I, I don't smoke marijuana. And you know, that's okay. Shout out to everybody who do drink. Shout and do hey, hey, I, do don't, drink. I don't frown upon you. You know, if you like to rock Lobos here, you know, drink one for me. Shout out to the people who smoke. Do your thing. I don't. So when I take pain pills, you got to understand, it does something different to me. Highly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I man. So addictive. It, yeah, man. So you may call me, and I think you didn't. You didn't call me. We didn't talk right. plenty of times. Yeah. And and I I know my conversation may drift off. Yeah. And that, I just wanted to tell you, you have to realize that wasn't the perk you know. That, was, <laughs> that wasn't the perk you know. So I just want to apologize. I want to take full ownership of this. And right now I'm getting back to walking around. I'm also getting back to being in touch with my lawyer. You know what I'm saying? We're going to figure, yeah, gonna figure <laughs> we're something gonna, out. We're going to holler at Petco. Yeah, man, because because the, the quad rupture repair was worse than what I thought it was after mm. I came out of surgery. I didn't know it was going to be this. You know what right, I mean? Right, like, right, right. Yeah, this is almost worse than, or if not on the same level as my ACL tear. ACL tear, yeah. yeah. So let me ask you this, bro. What, what, what? I'm glad you're feeling well, first of all. Um, 
I've been talking to you, so this is not new news to me. Funny story, right quick. You remember the night I called you, me and wifey was on the way to eat. And <laughs> Perk picked up the phone, y'all. And as soon as he said something, my wife was like, is Perk okay? Do we need to go to Houston? I said, yeah, baby, he okay. He just on that good right now. He, he got that He got that medication in his system. I did. But yeah, I man. Did. So what, what, so at what point, because <laughs> basketball season starting, basketball season starting, this thing about to jump off. At what point are you going to be able to move around? At what point are we going to see you in studio on NBA yeah. Today? How long that recovery is? So, so look, you know what I mean? By the end of October, you know what I'm saying? Middle of October, I'm going to be out of the brace. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm going to be able to walk around things to that nature. It take four months for me to fully yeah. get back to like, going outside for a jog or running on the treadmill, which I wasn't running anyway, but just put me back I in the perspective. Just to say, you better <laughs> start was, getting your ass on that treadmill. I, I know. And that's what, yeah. you know, when you're down and out, you have a lot to think about. A lot to think about, yep. Yeah, so, so yeah, man, so it's a four-month, you know, recovery time fully right, but I could get back to traveling, like, middle of October, end of October. Okay. So, so I'm good. I'm good. But I'm going to okay. tell you straight up. I haven't even been thinking about basketball like that. I I've been, it's, man, it's Rydell season. <laughs> it's Rydell season. We only, we're only four weeks into the football season. Man, I get it. Preseason been going on and all that. I get all that. Man, it's hey, you Rydell know, season. You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? The craziest thing about this podcast well, is, uh, is how much I ride for basketball and you ride for football. Mm -hmm. It's, the mm -hmm. crazy. it's so crazy. <laughs> right we up. spend all our time talking about our sport, but when we get together, we be wanting to talk about the other sport. Yeah. But I got some questions to ask you, though, bro, because it, like, you know, I'm excited. This all me. I'm excited, bro. Basketball season back. You know how much I, don't I really love know. Basketball. I know you. All right. I know you. So the first question is why are you sitting there with your big ass leg sewed up and you recovering? <laughs> Have you seen how good Zion Williamson looks? I, I did. I did watch that. Or, I, I did. I did watch that. And it's scary. Ooh. It's, Tell it's me this. Scary. Tell me this. Tell me this. What type of hope did that provide for you as far as Zion and how he going to look the rest of the season and how the Pelicans going to fare because he back? Do you have them doing anything in the West? I do. I do. I'm telling you straight up, man, listen. This is let, let me get this out of the way. The Clippers and Golden State should be the favorites in yep, the Western yep. Conference. Okay, we know we have Memphis, and you know you have uh Phoenix, and I know they're going through some things. Whatever, right? You got Denver, and they all right there. They should be the favorites. But when you look at this Pelicans roster, they are the most athletic, they have the most length and size than any other team in the NBA, period. And I yeah. saw that last night just in the preseason game. When you look at Zion, right, his brute force, his athleticism, the, his physical nature, the way he imposes his will. We know Giannis is the most dominant player in the NBA, right. but the healthy Zion ain't too far behind. No way. Let's get that no understood. Way. Then you have big – Big Jonas Valentunas, right, down there, banging down low, size, length, true seven-footer, nice touch around the basket, physical as hell. And then you have those wings. Bro. Herb, Bro. Marshall, uh, you, have, you, you, have, you have Larry, Larry Nance Jr., who's a power forward slash wing. Now he's stretching out the floor to the corner threes and things of that nature. You got Jackson Hayes, who yep. is stupid athletic. I don't know. I, I can't name a team like the New Orleans Pelicans. I can't name a team in the NBA that's deep, that has the size, length, and athleticism of the New Orleans Pelicans. And they also are very, very skilled. Brandon Ingram, C.J. McCullough. You got the kid Devontae Graham coming in off the bench. You got Jose, 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 Jose. He be uh, stealing everything. Yep. You have that. And then you have Willie Green, who has established culture. Listen, when I think about the New Orleans Pelicans, and, I, and I'm going to say this right look, you now. You know you're making me happy because you know this is my team. I know. You know I know. And I was team, so man. wrong about them. I said, look, 
I was wrong, but we 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 squashed it. Me and the Louisiana okay. folks and the old people out right there, we squashed that, baby. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Don't be surprised if they end up in the Western Conference Finals. Okay. Period. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave Dude. my hopes up there then. No, I'm that's leave them up there. That and 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 for me to even put a ceiling on that is to me is 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 really kind of disrespectful because if they're able to sacrifice. They could get to the finals. They can get to the finals. But I think experience oh, will kick Lord. in. Listen, experience will kick in against a team like the Clippers and Golden State. That's the only reason I would have concern. But when it comes to talent-wise, please. And I know you got, I know you, I know you about to jump in on and give me what you got, because I know you got some good stuff. I need to shout out one person. Okay. Man, shout out Teresa Re Weatherspoon, man. Straight up. Straight up. The assistant coach over there, player development player with development. Zion Williamson every damn day, Louisiana native, and she's doing her damn thing, okay? The players hey, love her. She loves being there. She's invested in the organization. And let me say this, Swagoo, and I know I'm long-winded. I'm like Michael Irv on first we take right we now. Say, we excited. <laughs> <laughs> Finger licking good. Look, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Teresa Witherspoon. You know she had a job offer last season that she turned down. Turned down. For, for more money mm -hmm. with, with, with the Phoenix Mercury to be the head coach and the assistant coach on the bench with the Phoenix Suns. So that's how dedicated she is, not only to the Pelicans, but to Zion Williamson. You could go, I missed you. I had to go on the rent. Hey, no, nah, it's culture. It's, it's, it's respecting the culture, but it's also respecting the relationships. Mm -hmm. And kind of wanting to see, kind of wanting to see through what you got started. Here's the thing for me, man. Like, I know the Pelicans are going to be a good team, right? I understand that. You know, C.J. McCollum is one of my best favorite players in the NBA. I got a yeah. tremendous amount of respect for him. But, yes, man, sir. seeing Zion come back after we've had, we've talked about Zion on podcasts and his responsibility to his craft and the game. And it look, you know what else was, was, was exciting for me? And I don't know if everybody knows. Zion looked happy. It looked like his mental space. Come on. Is, come on. Bro, it's a different, he got a whole different vibe about himself. And sometimes, like sometimes, you know, that comes from being in the dark a little while and everybody me, talking about. Hold on. Let me cut you off. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead if you got a $200 million dollar contract extension, wouldn't you look happy too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> true that. True that. That's that's very true. <laughs> go ahead. Very go true. ahead. That's go very ahead. True. But we but we also know some people with money that ain't happy. No, I'm just you know I've just had the jug that I do. But 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 I think Zion is happy about two hundred million. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> straight. <up. laughs> I ain't even factor that into the equation. But yeah. two hundred million will make you smile. Okay. <laughs> but but I do think, man. I do think when you look at the Pelicans and you think about Zion, healthy. He looks good. He looks explosive. The one thing I, I'm not even going to say it give you cause to pause. I'm just going to say you want to see it go throughout the season. Mm -hmm. We were both athletes, right? And we see, we see dudes come off that all season and they look great. They in great shape. And then you fall right back into your old routine and you start to lose a lot of that, what you gained in the all season getting ready. Yep. So I hope Zion keep that in the back of his mind of how many people talk about where well, he ain't going to last long in the league and he going to always be hurt because whatever whatever it was, to your point, if it was the $200 million that motivated him, if it was the negative negativity he was hearing that made him want to prove people wrong, or if it was just his support circle that realized, hey, dog, you got the world in the palm of your hands. You need to take advantage of this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I think whatever it is, Zion always been explosive. He always been athletic. And we never talked about Zion not being a good basketball player. Never. Right? But you know, never. when you get older and you start to realize like what these pros is really about, your mental gotta, your mental gotta grow up. And to yeah. me, that's what it looked like. Yeah. And and and, and look, you you're dead on. And you know what's crazy? It's diving a little deeper into it. He cleaned his house. Yeah. He, that's the first thing that happened, bro. He cleaned his house and he hired and he got new people around him that helped him. Think, think about this. 
Think about what he was doing in the community. Think about how more vocal yep. he has become. Think about what he did of the day that he signed that two hundred and fifty million dollar contract. Nobody was doing that. He had a he had when he signed that contract. It was a gym. It was a gym full of kids and children. Yeah, yeah, fans. You know what I'm saying? So now all of a sudden you start to clean up those little areas. All those whispers we was hearing, like we're not hearing. Uh, 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 dad, no more. Come out speaking about situations. It's about Zion. So, yep. what that what that goes to show me before you could do anything inside inside those lines. And I heard you say this before. You said, "Man, matter of fact, you said it on the pivot, man. The people, you, and, I, and I don't want to misquote you, but it was based on the lines that from when it comes down to your family." Whether it's your mom, it's your sister, is 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 sis, your yeah, wife, yeah. my nephews, my my nephew, my nieces. You said that you have to do it for them. And you applaud them because basically they played their role. Played their role. Allow you to be the best version of yourself, and people don't understand that. See the sacrificing of them playing their role. So that's the first thing, man. Because if you got a clear head, you can go to work and work you free. You go to work. Be the best version of yourself. No, nah, that's real, bro, because it, it just seemed like to me, you know, and sometimes you can be fooled through the camera, but it seemed like to me with Zion when I heard him talk, he mm -hmm. seemed like he had that kid enthusiasm about the game again. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? And yes. I think that's going to pay dividends for the Pelicans. Hey, bro, it let me is. tell you something, bro. I saw a seven-foot foe. Victor Wimbanyama. How you say his name? Win. Wim. I'm going to call I him Victor I don't even try it. I just, just Victor, Victor Doug. Hey. Victor Doug, <laughs> Victor. <laughs> you know how long it took me to try to figure out how to say Ansel the Coupo? I'm not I about to go. You still ain't saying me. it right, but it's fine. You still ain't saying it right. But Ansel the Coupo. Ansel the Coupo. Yeah, that's what I said. I think we both saying it wrong. We, no, I don't know. Well, whatever. Listen, it took me five years to get that right. <laughs> I'm not about to waste another five years of my life trying hey, to get this hey, name right. Wim Ben Yama. Victor Wim Ben Yama. Perk, all I know is this. When you seven foot four, you ain't supposed to be skilled like that, bro. He's seven four. The man had to duck down under the security barrier to get into the stadium. And Perk, we had a conversation a long time ago about international players, bro. We had a conversation about guys that weren't, weren't um, from the U.S. coming over and their skill sets being phenomenal, okay? I watched this dude, and I li I'm i still in disbelief that with his length, he can move like that. I think he had 37 the other day or something like that. 37. 30, 30, 37. Bro, it is unbelievable. Perk, let me ask you this, because we talk about this in football all the time. The evolution of the game, right? Like, you got Aaron Donald at defensive tackle who is considered one of the top three defenders ever. Aaron Donald, like 275, 280. Yeah. He uh, built different than body fat. Exactly. He ain't he ain't your old greats like Warren Sapp or John Randall right. or Bruce. Right. Hill. You know, all them dudes was in shape. All of them dudes was phenomenal. But Aaron Donald looks different. He's the evolution of the game and the sport. Perk, what do you do with a 7-4 wing, bro? You, you know like, what you do? You know what you do? <laughs> you go spend your hard-earned money and you buy yourself and your family some tickets and you go watch them play. That's what you do. You go watch Dude. them play. It's nothing you can do. You it's nothing you can do. It, it's go ahead. Go ahead. Bro, I'm 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 looking at this dude. First of all, <laughs> he bringing the ball up the court. Yeah. All right. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought KD had took the cake. No. I was like, you 6'11", bro, and you play like you 6'1". Yeah. All right? Your handles, you're low to the ground. The most phenomenal thing when we're getting in the basketball weeds is that they don't turn the ball over a lot. People ain't mm -hmm. ripping them. Mm -hmm. And and literally the law of, like, science says that it's a longer way to travel for the ball down and back up to your hand when you're that tall. Right. But I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this kid, bro. He's 7'4". But his arms go down to his knees. Yeah. And he bringing the ball up the court in the yeah. NBA. All right. So we look at Giannis, who is 6'11", 7 foot. 
handling the rock like he's handling it. You've talked about this at nauseum, positionalist basketball. Yes. Herc, is this the new era of a different type of player we've seen in the NBA between KD, between Giannis, and between Victor Dub, Wimbanyama, and Steph? But but what? No, I'm not putting Steph in there. Perk, he's seven four. I know, but 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 what what I'm saying? Now Steph is. is go ahead. I, I understand, and I get. No, I, I'm just adding to that a little bit. I just want to okay. throw a little. Well, I the shooting to... for Steph changes everything, right? Right. Like, and, and, but that's what Victor and KD got. But that's right. what I'm saying, bro. Like, if we if people are saying now, and I hear a lot of people say it, which I disagree that KD is the best player in the NBA. Right? He's, people say that. People, yeah, people say, say that. I, 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 don't was, agree. I was victim of that, but he's not. It's Giannis. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I think he's yeah. great, but I don't Perk. agree with that. Perk, add four more inches. I, I know. I know. And, and, and what's crazy is add four more inches and defense. And I'm not knocking Kevin Durant for playing D because I think he's an underrated defender. I'm right. talking about the way his ability, his ability to cover ground and block shots, Ooh. how agile he is. He don't run like a seven four guy. No, nope. see that's the thing. That's the thing that that got to me. See, here's the thing, right? He's going to come into the NBA and he's going to dominate. Period. Right off the bat, it, off the it, bat, no mistake about it. He's going to dominate. He's going to be box office. People are going to see, want to come see him. He is what y'all mean was when he came from over from China. Ah, uh, yes. Right? You remember You remember the, the height, the pub, the everything, yep. uh, uh, everything that was around him. Who? Cool. But let me say this. It's two points, very, it's two points that I want to make that you said, and everything was, was right. I just want to add on to, mm. just add a little bit more flavor to, to the season possible, okay? Here's the thing. You always think about food. <laughs> hey, swag. I miss you, bro. Here, here's you. the thing. He got the swag, dog. And he yeah. and he and he he got the good. See, people say, oh, he's arrogant. I don't like him. No, it's all right to be arrogant. Because everybody had to have some type of arrogancy about themselves. To Absolutely. Get to you had to feel like you was that dude. But him. He talked about it before he came over here and told everybody the player that he went against last night from the G League at night that he was the number one pick. And if he wasn't living, then okay, cool, he probably would have been. But since he is living, he's the number one pick. He talked that talk and then backed it up. If they didn't win the game, I get that. But he put on a damn show. Oh, so my here, God. So it goes back to this, too. You and I talked about this. I caught a lot of heat about this. But once again, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. All I'm saying is. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Well, I, <laughs> I appreciate it. This All I'm saying is, and, and I'm so for real. All these upcoming young athletes in the basketball world, you need to be working your ass off. Because yeah. the way that it's going right now, since the NBA has went global, it is so much more competition. And yeah. I'm going to tell you this right now. Those European players, they're starting to get professional training at the age of 13. They're not even going to school like that. They're working on basketball. This kid, Victor, been working on basketball since about the age, since a younger. Yep. And they're getting ahead of the game. And guess what? They're being taught in the right culture and in the right matter. Because if you think about all the European the foreign players that play in our game today that are making headlines and making the much noise, they're taking over our league. Like and people can be mad. People can be mad at me. I don't give a damn. But here's the here's the guard on this truth. Luca, Giannis, Jokic, MB, Rudy Gobert. Okay, you can say what you want about Rudy, but Rudy's defense so specialist. Yeah, three, three time defensive player yeah. of the year. And so that the, matters. That matters like like crazy. And so when you look at all these up and coming young other even even the ones that's up and coming, 
Look at Josh Giddy in Oklahoma City. In yeah, Oklahoma City, yep. right. He's going to be a player, okay? He is a player. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with in this league. So when I'm looking at these guys and I'm looking at the way that the direction that the NBA is going, they're going to these European guys because they're coming over. They're more ready. They're mentally prepared. And they got game. And they got size. And they got length. And they got that dog mentality. It's not knocking anything from the USA players, Swagoo. But here's the thing. Name a time. And it's just keeping it real. Name a time we didn't hear about a European uh, player being caught up in some BS. Name a time yeah, we didn't heard about Giannis hitting the headlines over some negative news. Name a time we didn't heard about uh, Jokic hitting the, hitting the stuff about negative news. Name a time we didn't heard about MB. The only time we hear about MB is when he troll on Twitter and he's doing it himself. Yep. Other yep. than that, one thing about him, you know that you could trust him. You could build a franchise around him. They're going to come in, show up to work every single day. They're going to take their behinds home. Half of them is married with kids, and you ain't got to worry about the extra stuff with them. And you getting you, a, a superstar caliber player. You bring me into a whole nother conversation. and we That's what we do. Here. Yeah, we're going to go here because, you know, I got a 13-year-old son, your son, Hoopstone, and – I, I'm I'm June is about to work and I posted on Instagram the other day while his workout was going on his flaws and him losing the ball off his feet and him dribbling the ball wrong and leaning over his feet and chest and not being in the right position when he dribbling the basketball. Per, yep. We are now in a society of basketball with parents and kids where they only want to show when they do something good. And they and they and they and they, they want to be superstars and have likes and follows instead of being real hoopers. Come on, and, man. And what you saying about the international players is the appeal for them is to actually make it to the NBA. Yes, it's not it, to be popular. And, and, and Sway, you know, you know why, though? You're able to give June, my nephew, that good gospel and keep it real with him? Because you done it. I did it. I did it. So you know what it yeah. takes. You done yeah, it. Man. So you can correct them. All these other people living in the fantasy world, bro. And I know this is going off a topic, but damn it, we no, here. this ain't off topic. Yeah. It's poignant. It matters because yeah. we 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 lead in with a seven four skilled international player that's gonna be the number one overall draft pick in the yeah. NBA. Yeah, and, and damn it, we here. So let, let's dive even a little deeper because we need to address everything. Yeah. Okay. Let's even address. Let's even address the kid in Monty Bates. Okay. Let's address his situation. Who who. Uh, passed his senior year, skipped the year to go to Memphis because yep, he was trying to, to hurry up and fulfill his needs and then want to wait, wait for the grind or wait, have patience to get to his ultimate goal, where was the NBA. We saw what just happened with him with the charge in Memphis, right? Okay? Not having a, a, a Michigan, wherever it was, not having the right people around. Him. Okay, here's the problem that I have, and I've been fighting this battle for the last two years when it comes down to the AAU circuit. Well, let's speak on it, bro, because I'm, no, I'm, I'm right to. there with you. Yeah, dog, because I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Bro, I tell people on a day-to-day -day basis, hey, man, you got a 10-year-old kid? I had to even catch myself because even with, even with Stone, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate, you know, them putting them on, you know, big fella on ESPN and he getting his notoriety, but I had to say, hold on, you know what? This kid 10 years old. Yeah. And, and the one thing, the one thing that these kids don't realize is, as a ten-year-old, twelve-year-old, thirteen-year-old, fourteen-year-old, right? I feel like you shouldn't get notoriety or start getting ranked and things to that nature till you get in high school. Okay, that's where I'm at so, with it. So, so you have these kids, bro, that are underage that are getting ranked, and what happens is these rankings are coming out every single year. So they, they, they got access to phones. They got access yep. to everything that's going on. And so what happens is these kids that go from being ranked top five to rank 30. And yep. do people realize mentally to these, to these dumbass people out here that's doing the rankings, do people realize that you could crush a kid for good doing this? Yeah. Yep. You could crush them for life. But see, that's Perfect. that's. That's what we doing in America. And, but Bro, overseas, they're not doing this. Overseas. It's just work. It's, it's just, just work, work over there. 
It's it ain't work. no, it ain't no cameras at 10 and 12, 11, 12, 13. It's work. Man, I knew we was gonna get here because this was the one thing I was thinking about when you we talked about this with Luca, and I just heard Giannis say this. Giannis just did an interview and he just said it take it take more than skill to be good in basketball. Did you hear him? He he said he said he said LeBron is skilled, Steph is skilled, um MJ was skilled, Kobe was skilled, but he said the desire to win. And the desire to continue to get better is what separate them dudes from dudes that just might be up there for a second. And Perk, we've known this for a long time, right? We've, yeah. we've, we've understood this for a long time. But to your point, I think it's important for our cousins and kin folks to understand, especially if they got kids in youth sports or if they just followers of the game itself. These kids over, in, it's just like baseball. It's just like baseball. These international kids, their dream is to come across the pond and play in professional leagues. They dream ain't to be on camera or to be popular or to have Drake or LeBron show up at their games. It ain't they dream to be uh, to have a million followers and get NIL and endorsement deals. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. That's available to you if you work and people believe in your skill set. But right. there is a difference when you get to that pro level. And you got dudes that all they know is work and all they know is the grind and they hold your, see, Perk, that's the difference, man. When we was growing up, our dream was to go to the league, bro. Our Period. dream wasn't to be popular on Instagram and Twitter. Period. It was it, our dream. And the reason why we worked so hard was to go to the league and take care right. of our family and have some money in our pocket. That's and, it. And I think, I think, hold on, man. Siri then picked up on my down. Um, they, 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 we dreamed of that because we knew that that was a way to change our family's life. Thank you. For these kids now, they got two, $3 million for they, for they get to college. And yeah, again, and, that, me, and, and that's what I'm saying. Let me ask you this, Swaggle. Let me yeah. ask you this and, and, and be all the way up 100. If you, if you had the number one pick, I'm going to ask you three questions. All right. If you had the number one pick in the NBA draft today to start a team, which player are you taking? Victor. No, 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 no. I'm talking about players that's actually playing in the NBA draft. So oh. in the NBA. So erase the playing NBA. Playing in the NBA? Yeah. What the players are you drafting right now? You think about the age, what he's doing, all this. What, what players you draft the number one to build your franchise around? LeBron James. At 39, 30. Oh, you mean like I thought you was just saying? No, no, I'm talking about right now in the flesh, not Gian Giannis Antetokounmpo. Okay, cool. That's number one. Yeah. What player would you draft at number two? Probably be Luca. What player would you draft at number three? Um. Probably Ja. Okay, that's cool. Well, yeah. two out of your three or four players, and it was hard to 100%. put Jai in there because you probably was thinking about Jokic. You probably oh. got to. Only reason I put Jai in there because I think Jai is cut from the old school of the will to win. He different, but we've been, we been knowing that. Yeah, we like Jai popular that. and everybody love him. But when it comes to basketball, Jai Morant is about basketball. Like, about all of the, don't let all of the other stuff fool you about what he be doing. Ja has already acknowledged no. my first priority is basketball. No, and, and and that's what he's always been on. And that's why yeah. I fell in love with him since he was at Murray State. I saw yeah. the passion in him. So look, my whole But it would thing, be it would be Jokic at four. It but, would be MB at yeah. five. That but that yeah. but see, but see, that's what I'm saying, man. And see, yeah. people around here not really seeing the bigger picture. When I'm around here looking at it like, all right, y'all can keep sleeping all y'all want. It's not just, it's, it's European, you know, it's Africa because they yep. got it going on over there. They just, they got the league over there now. And we know about Siakam, we know about Serge Ibaka, we know about all these players that are coming in. The competition is hitting different. So while your Perfect. ass is out here in the AU, wanting to go to these tournaments and pose for the camera, you better get your ass in that gym. Better be in the gym, dog. I, I I tell you what, I've had the fortunate blessing 
of being around, um, I, I hope Big Pratt okay with this, KD father. Uh, you know, when we was living up in D.C., yeah, June was playing yeah, great with dude. June. Right, June dude. was playing with Durant, Team Durant. And it, it's still a circuit. It still got the same bull crap that go on. Yep. But what I was fortunate for my son to see is that for all of these things you see with KD, 35 Ventures and they making documentaries and he handling his business, he got shoe deals and all of that. KD is about the gym. He's been about the gym. His first, his first love is the gym, bro. Is the like, gym, and it ain't not no coincidence. Money, not no. the clothes, not the gym, the gym. And that's why I've always respected Kevin Durant, regardless of things that I disagree with him on, and things that I don't think like, like he'll always be remembered for, and all of that. He's a phenomenal player. He respects the game of basketball. And the reason why he is great at the game of basketball is because he spend more time in the gym than everybody. That's Bad. it's as simple as that. Like, Bad. and 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 when we start talking about spending time in the gym, it's a lot of skilled players, it's a lot of great basketball players, but they don't last because they fall out of love with the gym. Right. Bad. So that's what I'm trying to teach. This is a great transition. I brought up KD. Our boy Ben Simmons hooped for the first time in the in a long time. I, he looked pretty damn good too. He looked good, Perk. I, Perk, listen, man. I'm gonna tell he you this. Did, he did. I, he looked good. He looked. Go good. ahead, man. I want to hear. I, I want to hear how you feel about that. Do you think this changes everything about Brooklyn? Are you still like the wait and see game? If 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 stuff gonna go haywire with 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 the mental part of it with uh, Kyrie and Ben, or do you think this is the Brooklyn Nets team that we've all waited for? That's gonna have a chance to go win the NBA championship. Well, 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 one thing I think we all should know, and I think we all should realize is that we should never, ever, ever jump the gun and trust the Brooklyn Nets. So I will not come on here <laughs> on Swagger and Perk and jump the damn gun and say, Oh, yeah, I think they didn't figure it out. Hell no, I gotta see it. And I'm when I say I gotta see it, I gotta see it at least to the all-star break Long to term. make me a yeah. belief. I gotta see the commitment. I got to see the adjustments. I got to see the accountability on the defensive side of things. And I got to see the mental toughness. Because I'm going to tell you right now, when you look at the Eastern Conference, it's stacked, bro. Ooh. It's the best It's the best damn conference in the NBA. And we're going down the line, we're talking about the Bucs. We're talking about the Celtics. We're talking about uh, Philly. We're looking yeah, at uh, Chicago. Uh, uh, hold on. Atlanta. Hold on with that Chicago. I got you ain't go, putting the Bulls in there this year? No. Nah. We talking about... <laughs> well, ball, we, ball, ball injured, right? Yeah, yeah he injured. And they okay. ain't really... Okay. I don't know. Maybe they'll turn the corner. But 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 Atlanta. But you can throw Chicago in there if you want. I ain't going to knock it. Chicago. Them all there. Yeah. Chica Chicago. Miami. Toronto, Cleveland. Miami. You know what I'm saying? And no, that's, that's eight teams. And I haven't even mentioned Brooklyn. Yeah. So that, it's You know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give you the mic right back. Man, you better watch out for Cleveland. You better watch out for them Cavaliers. You got to give me the mic back. I want you to dive into it because I told these people about them and they wanted to, they, they started acting like I was tripping. Bro. Swaggo. They got the best starting five on paper. Hey, man. They got Go ahead. that addition. Bro, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm scared because. You know, it, the darlings of the dance is obviously Milwaukee and Brooklyn. And everybody think about that. But D. Mitch added to that backcourt. And the length and athleticism on that team, bro, with the coach. Hey, I'm I'm going to, I'm a pause. But when I see this thing start working, because it's going to start working. It's going to work. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm a, man, look, I know it's how everybody right now, <laughs> don't be surprised if the Cleveland Cavaliers play in your favorite team I, to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. I, don't I, be I, surprised. Swag, think about this. Darius Garland at the point. Bro, Garland and D. Opinion, Mitch alone. But, but look, in my opinion, he might be a top five PG in the league. He was an all-star last year. He was year. an all-star, yeah. Can, okay, Donovan Mitchell. We we already know his resume longer than the holiday weekend. We got we got we don't even know who they're gonna put at the three yet. 
It's either going to be a Coro out of Auburn with the nice size six, eight, like kind of they working them into being a three and D guy, but super athletic, do all the yeah. dirty work. And then you got those damn twin towers. Them twin towers, boy. K- mm. K- uh, 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 Jared Allen and Evan Mobley. And and this is what people Mobley tell is a hooper. Boy, say that again. That big fella, listen, man. Now say that again, bro. He is a ho- he ain't just a big man. Mobley, Evan Mobley is a hooper, bro. Like it ain't, it ain't no, it ain't. Don't be shocked if he an all-star. You, you know what's crazy? Don't be shocked. You, you, you know what's crazy? It's on draft night, right? I'm working the draft and he get drafted. And my comparison to him was a more skilled modern day Bill Russell. And people thought that I was tripping. And by the way, RIP to the legend Bill Russell. Yep. Rest yep. in peace. Listen. People thought that I was tripping. And I said, well, y'all haven't watched basketball because Bill Russell was an athlete. He could sprint the floor. He could block shots. And the, the, and the thing that I loved about Bill Russell, this is what people under, underestimate. See, blocking the shot and sending the ball into to the stands, that ain't nothing but a show for the fans. Blocking but, when you block, break. but when you block a ball and keeping it playing this to change possession, that's what's coach's porn. That's yes, coaches sir. form on the film room. That's why when you walk into an NBA locker room, coaches don't even talk about shot blocking. They talk, they challenge their team to take charges. You know why? Because sometimes out of shot block, that don't mean you're gonna get the ball and get the possession. Man, that's you preaching basketball now. You coaching basketball telling, now. I'm just telling you, man, Mobley is different. I'm telling you this right now. People need to realize how special this kid is, man. Bro, I'm he a hooper, bro. He's he a is damn, a hooper, bro. I, look, on, on paper, the Cleveland Cavaliers have the best starting five. In they gonna basketball. give, they gonna they gonna give people hell. You hear me? And hell. when D Mitch, when, when when Garland and D Mitch get going, the only thing they gonna have to work out is um is how the the volume score. No, but no, what, they just stagger their minutes. That ain't hard. See, you think they gonna stagger the minutes? Because look, you don't you don't have a you don't have a deep bench. So this is the thing, right? This is the thing that I love that Donovan Mitchell did in Utah that was so great. He kind of translated his game at times and had to play the point. See, when you have two guards like Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell who could be those combo guards, now they complement each other. See, yeah. Darius Garland could play off the ball. Donovan Mitchell can too. So my thing is, say just say hypothetically, and I don't want to dive too deep into it, but just say you you had your game and you you start the game with your starting five. Say it's Karis LeVert, uh, you know, Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, LeVert, and all them, right? You start that, right? And you start that, you start that starting five, Jared Allen. All of a sudden, what ended up happening is you get to about the six-minute mark in the first quarter. And then all of a sudden, Coach Bickerstaff say, I'm going to yank Donovan Mitchell and Evan Mobley. Now I'm just about to let Darius Garland and Jared Allen rock out in the rock last out. six minutes. Yeah. I'm going to start the second quarter with, 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 uh, with Evan Mobley and Donovan Mitchell. Now all of a sudden, everything is working out. You know what I'm saying? You never, like, you never lose, you never lose your, 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 your offensive creativity. Hey, bro, listen. I want to go back though, because the the original question I asked you was about Ben. Um, so Ben, because we're talking about Darius Garland and Donovan <laughs> Mitchell. So Ben and Kyrie, who's gonna be the point guard? You you gotta make Ben the point guard. You gotta let him be the point guard. And, and here's why. Ben Simmons, without the ball in his hands, is not effective. On, on the offensive end. It's just like Rondo. It's just like uh, Draymond. It's Draymond. just like Draymond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said that. I said Ben Simmons is a Draymond Green with more athleticism. You know what I'm saying? Like that make all the sense in the world. He just don't have the dog mentality. I said right. this about I said this 
a year and a half ago. Great defender, floor general, really good passer. And, and what we'll go? Yep. What Steph? What Steph and, and Clayton up start letting Draymond do? Be the point forward. Be the point. You got yeah. to because they know he's effective. I'm just trying to think, bro. I'm so damn excited. All right, we go, we didn't talk to everything basketball. This is turned into a basketball show. Listen, here's what I want to know from you. Give me your league MVP in the NBA this year and give me your NBA champion. So uh, my league MVP is Anthony Marshawn Davis. Yeah, I said it. Anthony Marshawn Davis Jr. That's that's my league MVP. Okay. And, and look, he had a, I know they got smacked the other night, but he had a, a nice 11 and 11. He looked healthy. He looked strong. He looked great. And I feel like Darvin Ham is going to feature him like they should have been doing, and he's on the mission. When he came out and told, said that he want to play 82 games, I know he got it on his damn mind. It's on his mind. Okay. So that's your MVP. Who the champ? I got the Clippers, dog. I got, I got the Clippers. It's no disrespect to Golden State, Boston, Milwaukee. I think all them teams are uh, great. But I'm not saying I got the Clippers hands down, but I got them picked to win it all. I got one of the best coaches, if not the best coach, in right. the entire NBA. And Swaggoo, when you look at their roster. Bro, here's my only – this be my hang-up, bro. And I guess it's not a hang-up. Kawhi games, man. Like, is he going to play enough games this year for the Clippers to be positioned when they get into the playoffs? Yes, man. Yes. That that shouldn't be. Okay. That should, All right. I, I, he, but look. Because I think home I think home court going to matter when you start talking about the top tier teams in the West. But look, Swag, they're so deep. He don't have to play a lot of games. See, with, look. Here's right. the thing. If Kawhi Leonard just plays 50 or 60, if he plays 60 games, they're going to be great. Let me explain why. Look at the depth and look at their roster. You got John Wall and Reggie Jackson at the Reggie point Jackson, guard. Yep. You got Nicholas Batum, who's a 3 and D guy, played guard multiple positions, proving that he could just play his role and knock down shots. Great at rebounding, too, by the way. You got PG. We saw what PG did last year. He started to come alive. You know what I'm saying? He got through his trials and tribulations. Yep. He looking like the PG of old. Okay? Then you look. They still got Marcus Morris. Morris. They still got no. they still got the young fella uh uh Terrence Mann. They 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 still have they still have Big Zubac banging down low. Like You know what? You know what? I'm I le- you taught me something with the with the Cleveland conversation, and now I feel a lot better about the Clippers because of the staggering the minutes. You don't you don't really lose anything. Obviously, we got to make sure John Wall can stay healthy, and he gonna be John Wall that for the Clippers as opposed to John Wall that is a high volume scorer. But, we, but we, outside, they don't, they don't really need him. Like that's what not, I'm saying. Not, not like that because we have remember what Reggie Hot Sauce Jackson was doing. Oh, I, bro. Like you, <laughs> the argument is you don't. Reggie is the guard, point guard. Like we know that. Like and he's he plays he's played obviously more and better than John Wall over the uh, past couple of years. But John Wall still got some cachet, and I think they signed him for a reason because maybe maybe a maybe a few of them nights he can go off for twenty five or thirty no, when no, they need. They, you know they, what I mean? they did they did right by signing them. You know why? Yeah. What, what's the old saying? Iron sharpens what? Sharpens iron. Okay, so at, at all times, Reggie Jackson and John Wall got to be on their best stuff. Yeah. Because they could be yep. cool, but they could be. be. Got you. It's all, right. all right. So you got the Clippers winning it all. Yep, sure do. And you got um, Anthony Davis as your MVP. You heard what I said? My MVP this year going to be Giannis Antetokounmpo. I, I can't be mad at you. And my champions are gonna be the Bucks. I can't even be mad at you. Um, I think when Joel Ingles get back healthy, bro. <laughs> Don't you start preaching? Come on, give it to me. You're not gonna be able to defend this team, bro. Last year we saw Wes Matthews start knocking down shots. We all know Chris Middleton got injured on the way to the playoff run, or they could have been there this year. Um I just think when you look at this team as a whole, 
and Giannis' ability to facilitate. Because we get enamored with Giannis dunking, and we get enamored with him putting up 50 points in the defense. But Giannis is a Giannis one of the best passers in the NBA. And now you surround him with shooters. So, so you make a decision to either shrink into the lane and give up 14 to 15 threes a game, or you say we're gonna let Giannis get 50, but that plan don't work either because they D up. That, yeah. Bro, I think this is the – I think with this roster and adding Ingles, I, bro, I, I don't know how you – like, I don't know how in a seven-game series you handle all of that. You Drew can't. Holiday started knocking shots down last year, bro. You cannot handle it. And, look, here, here's the thing. I feel you, and that's why I say you can't get no argument out of me. Let yeah. me add some on to why I love your picks, okay? I'm staying with mine, but why I love the Bucks as far as them winning it all. See, people have to realize this. Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton did something they never did before. See, see, when you, when you win a championship, you only got a short window to get rest anyway before the season starts. Yeah. You got you to remember. They jumped on, I think it was four or five days later, went overseas and went and got them a gold medal. USA, yep, yep. And then came right back into the season. They body wasn't used to that. Man, that's a long, I'm telling you, man, that's, that's a long time. When you make, and that's, and that's exactly why you got to appreciate what the hell LeBron James be doing, man. I be trying to tell people to get to the finals, dog, you got to be wired differently. Yeah, with your man. body, with your sacrifice, and with your motivation, with everything. But I ain't even mad at your point. Uh, yeah, man, I, I just I, – I, when they signed Joel Ingles, and I know he going to be coming off injury, I thought about the shooting. And I'm like, dog, they, like knockdown shooters. And, and look, you know what else? Joel Ingles so poised, man. You could put him at the point. Man, I'm telling you. I'm telling he, you, bro, the he, Bucks. The Bucs got so much better bringing Joel Ingles, bro. And he a dog. He a dog. All right, man. So I, look, nah, nah, we ain't gonna just do this. I got some, I got some things. We got to jump to the right there real <laughs> quick. And I got some things I gotta ask you. And the topics, and here we are. Oh. Here we are. We stand down here in Texas. I understand you out there in Bristol right now, but we in Texas right now, damn it. You'll be back soon. Yo, Cowboys, bro. Yo, damn Cowboys, bro. I'm, I'm telling you this right now. I ain't going to even lie. I'm not a hater. Man, they are playing some inspiring, winning basketball, man. The camaraderie is there. The chemistry is there. I'm loving everything about it. I got two questions to ask you right now. Can your defense... <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Can your defense, bro, win y'all a Super Bowl? Forget everything else on the offensive end. Can your defense, that defense that y'all got, win y'all a Super Bowl? First of all, warms my heart. We're talking about football. You said basketball. Let me correct that because cousins and kin folks be listening to us hard. Um, you see how calm I got? You see how calm I'm being right now? Um, go, go ahead. Because go I say it all the time, man. Like, you got to ride the roller coaster when you're a Dallas Cowboy fan. Perk, the defense is not good enough to win a Super Bowl, but it damn sure is going to go a long way in if they're going to get there or not. They are good enough defensively to have a chance in every game they play. Exactly. And that's all you want in the NFL. I, I, like rarely do you get a Patrick Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers or a Tom Brady. That's rare, bro. You don't, you don't, you rarely have quarterbacks like that. Right. right? That where, where you could just say a lot of things are haywire around us, but we got this guy, so we going to be okay. Yeah. Bro, what the Dallas Cowboys defense is doing right now, they are they are better than they were last year. 
and they led the league in takeaways last year. But you're not gonna get me emotional. No, 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 no. We just have the cover, and it's okay. It's week four. We've beat, we've beat the Washington Commanders. We beat the New York Giants, and we beat the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, that's that's out of those three teams, two of them are, are really good teams. Yeah, so I'm not going to I'm not going to act like we beat who you gonna need to beat in order to get to a Super Bowl. But that that no. defense is go. That defense is gonna play that way every every game, bro. So it's perfect. only hold on, you, time out. We keep you not gonna get me to say the Cowboys going. No, to I'm not. Game. I'm not saying that. But it's only two other teams in the NFL that I could legitimately say that's really better than the Cowboys right now. Re possibly three. The Kansas City Chiefs, mm -hmm. uh, the Buffalo Bills, yep, and uh, the Philadelphia 76ers. and we gonna see that matchup. The Philadelphia in two weeks. Eagles, yeah, Eagles. My bad. We gonna see that yep. in two weeks. But everybody else, I don't have faith in Tampa Bay like that. We see how trash the Rams looking right now. They don't look good at all. And then on top of that, I know your pick, the Chargers. They hurt. They battle with a lot of injuries. Season end, season, season ended injuries. Okay, and then my pick, the Bengals. They looking real suspect. I know it's early, but it goes into my next conversation that I'm about to ask you about the Cowboys that we got to talk about and we got to clear the air. We all, me and you both, have been in locker rooms, and we know when the spirit, we know when the energy, we know when the camaraderie has changed. We know this, okay? Michael Irvin say, <laughs> in rush, in rush, we trust. Michael Irvin say, it was a rush hour one, a rush hour two, a rush hour three, and it was a, they was about to make a rush hour four, but something happened and when they didn't get the movie out. He said, well, it's about to be a rush hour four with Cooper Rush. Here's my thing to you. The Cowboys was lifeless when Dak was starting at the, at the quarterback position. I didn't see the energy. I didn't feel the energy. And all of a sudden I see the, the, the high five, the, 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 the chest bumping. Not the, you too. The, the, the dancing you in too. the end. Hold on, the dancing in the end zone. I see Zeke going to his social media flex. Zeke running the hell out the uh, football right now like he got new energy. You know what I'm saying? I see we just y'all just got Michael Gallup back. Max you something, bro. You can say what you want to say, but here's the thing. Remember this. Tony Romo got hurt. Tony Romo was getting paid a lot of money. Dak Prescott came in, started winning games with the Dallas Cowboys. Tony Romo never got his job back. Oh my God, bro. Here we are. Same situation, same organization, and now we're looking at Cooper Rush and Dak and Dak Prescott. So correct me if I'm wrong right now. This upcoming week, y'all got the uh, uh, the Rams, Rams right? Then y'all got the 76ers. The right? Eagles. Yeah, the Eagles. You know what the hell I'm saying, man. The okay, drugs go kind of ran off, man. All right, I'm helping. I'm just helping. Okay, go. Y'all got the Eagles. From the way that Jerry was talking on the radio and what I've been hearing, he don't he ain't really optimistic about Dax coming back yet. If Cooper Rush and these Cowboys go beat the Rams and they go beat uh of uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, and then Dak decides to come back, what in the hell is going to happen at the quarterback position? Perk, don't do this. No, I'm doing don't it. Don't do I'm this, doing man. it. I need to know. Bro, Dak going to play when he come back, bro. He making $40 million, okay? See, you getting caught up in the same political... No, bro, it's a different situation with Romo because Romo was, like, nearing the end of his contract, all right? And Romo was hurt a lot worse than Dak. That's number two. Cooper Rush has done a phenomenal job. You remember when Teddy Bridgewater came in and went 5-0 and with the Saints when Drew Brees got hurt? Yeah. You remember that? You can ride and Drew Brees... And Drew Brees came back and they put Drew Brees in the game. And you yeah, can make he, an argument. You can make an argument play. that Drew Brees wasn't better than Teddy Bridgewater when he got back. He was. He was old in his career. Dak is going to be back in the game. 
when it's time for Dak to be back in the game. That gives you the best chance to win long term. Okay. And I know we live in this generation of we going with the hot thing. Dak Prescott is a better quarterback than Cooper Rush. The Dallas Cowboys have a better chance of reaching a Super Bowl with Dak Prescott playing quarterback. Is he, hey. is he, is he really is? Is he though? Are, yeah. we living, are we living with the hot thing or are we living with the real thing? We because, living with the real thing, bro. Okay, just, is just top, trust is, me. Is Dak a top five quarterback in the NFL? No, he is not. He's a top ten. It probably ten. Hooper Rush ain't. He probably ten. Well, it don't matter if he ten. He top ten. I ain't about to fight you. You ain't even no cowboy fan. I'm not. I'm not. You but it's still, a, it's still. I'm not. It's. I'm. A, I'm really a free agent, but it's still America's team. And I didn't want to get too hot, hot and bothered. And you got to understand, this is a great conversation to have. No, the Cowboys you're start. you're trying to start crap. <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm not. I just want to know because I tweeted it out. I ain't getting no response from you. I just wanted to know. So I wanted to ask you in person. It's because it's unnecessary roughness. Flag on the play. <laughs> Dak Prescott going to be the quarterback when he come back. I love you, bro. Cousins and Ken folks. Me and Swagoo done put uh, – me and Swagoo. Me and Perk done put one on X. <laughs> We have missed y'all. Y'all know what the hell happened. My man recovering from surgery. Hey, bro, real talk, I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm glad you got through that surgery. I think a lot of times when we athletes, we take surgery for granted. It's a lot of things that could go wrong during surgery. So I'm glad you're back man, with us. Man, I appreciate it, Swag. I'm happy to be back. And, bro, yeah. I miss you. And I love you. Look, and this is what people don't realize. Love you, bro. Bro, real quick, this is what people don't realize. Bro, I... Am terrified of going under anesthesia. I know so, it. do you realize the week leading up to this surgery? I have been depressed about going yeah. under anesthesia. That's, That's real. why I don't. I don't do that, bro. So, here's another. I'm happy to be back. We back in live effect. And look, fix your attitude and fix your body okay. language, man. It's You're all to good. Some shit at the end of, of the podcast. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I love you, bro. Uh, it's been swagger with perk. Cousins and Kent folks, we back. Much love to y'all. We'll tap in next week. Peace.